um, Dr Megan Woods. Thank you, Mr Chair. Um, it's my pleasure to take a call. And um, I'd like to thank, uh, thank the Minister and the Chair for taking the opportunity to take a call, but I have some further questions um, for that Minister and the Chair. As um, colleagues who have taken calls on this side of the House have said um, that um, we, we did previously support this legislation, we supported it to committee, but there were just too many questions at that committee stage. Um, I didn't sit on the Select Committee, Mr Chairman, um, but um, from talking to colleagues who did and reading through the reports that came out of that, there's some glaring questions that need to be answered. And one of those for, for me, Mr Chairman, and one I'd like the Minister to respond to, is why New Zealand is choosing to go down a very different path than Australia, where Australia has a regime that allows us to remain in ministerial discretion. That is the regime that Australia has had, and as the Speaker that has previously spoken has just taken her speech, uh, her seat has identified, it actually is um, a situation that has worked in New Zealand, that members are using the example of the Canterbury earthquakes as an example of why it is that we need this legislation to come into play. Well, what we have um, an example of there, Mr Chairman, is the ability for things to be done a little bit differently in exceptional circumstances under the current rules. So why there is a need for this shift, why there is a need for us to put in place a regime that is fundamentally different than Australia, um, and one of our largest trading partners, partners, why it is that we would do that, Mr Chairman. I'd also um, like to address the Minister's comments that she made around the need um, for the um, subjective nature of the test. I think the Minister, when she took, took um, her call, said that was because of necessity. Mr Chairman, I dispute that, that actually the, the advice that was put forward to the committee actually did talk about different subjective and objective tests that could be applied. Um, I'd like to know why it is that um, objective um, tests around, for example, a numerical um, objective test around a proportion of a market that was affected or other proportionalities and numerical measures weren't put into play, that we have a solely subjective test at play here. And that is um, something that I would be interested to know why it is that we have not chosen when there were various models that were put forward, why any element of objectivity in that, in that test is put into play. But Mr. Mr Chairman, if we do actually look at the clauses in the bill, um, clause, the, the clauses 10 that, um, uh, that have a number of letters follow them that lay out the investigation and the, where the public interest test lies in clause 10F of the bill, um, what I would like to know, the Minister has said um, in terms of the, on the issue of waiting, which I think is an important issue, that what we have, as we've heard from industry, is they need some kind of clarity. They need to know the rules they're playing in. They need to know what's going to be the really important element when applying these tests. Because, Mr Speaker, one of the things that led to us pulling our support from this was listening to New Zealand exporters and New Zealand manufacturers telling us how detrimental this would be to their businesses and how this wouldn't be a, a help at all. So if we turn to clause 10F of the bill, where the, where the um, public interest test is laid out in 10F3 through um, subparts A through H, I'd just like to ask the Minister some questions around that. So we have investigate, in investigating whether imposing the duty is in the public interest. The matters the Chief Executive must investigate include the following. A, the effect of the, of the duty on the prices of the dumped or subsidised good. What's the trigger? When we're talking about the effect, what kind of trigger are we talking about here? What, what threshold has to be passed in order for the, che the Chief Executive to think that that is significant? We then go to B, the effect of the duty on the prices of light goods produced in New Zealand. Again, what kind of, quant what kind of ballpark are we talking about? What does the impact have to be um, in order for the Chief Executive to take this seriously as a consideration. And this is something that I would like to hear from the Minister of. 
And I think if we look at C, the effect of the duty on the choice or availability of like goods. Now, this is a very broad test, Mr. Mr. Chairman, and I think we do need some clarity from the Minister about um, what, what scope are we talking about here? How broad does the choice have to be or how, how narrow does it have to be in order for this test to be applied? Because that is something, Mr. Chairman, that, that does need to be clarified. And, and even more oblique, the effect of the duty on product and service quality. Now, Mr Speaker, I would like to know um, more from the Minister exactly what is intended by this clause. What, is the impact, what, what do we mean by the effect of the duty on the product and service quality? What threshold has to be crossed in order for this to be deemed significant? E, the effect of the duty on the financial viability of the domestic industry. So, Mr Chairman, what I'd like the Minister to, to tell me is, does this mean if it's going to put um, in a, play, um, a single player out of business, whether it undermines several players in a particular industry, whether or not it reduces the profits of a single player in an industry, or whether does it across the board reduce pro products to several players in that industry? What does that mean, and how will that be applied? And then if we go down further that list, Mr. Mr Chairman, whether there is an alternate supply domestically or internationally of the goods available. What I mean, how broad? How broad are we going here? Are we saying somewhere in the world there is an alternative, or are we saying that that is available in New Zealand or it is available in, in markets that we trade with regularly? What does that mean in application in, t in terms of how this legislation is intended to be applied? And then the very broad um, criterion H, which is any factor that the Chief Executive considers essential to ensure the existence of competition in the market. Now, Mr Speaker, these are the factors that the Chief Executive can investigate when applying the public interest test. Now, these are not ands or ors. They um, uh, exist um, in beautiful harmony together. But what we do need to know from the Minister is what, 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 is, the, what is the strongest driver here? What is it that the Chief Executive will be looking at most strongly when making these assessments, when applying this test? Because to say, as the Minister has, when she took her call and said that we um, need to leave that, um, um, we don't want to be too prescriptive, that's not desirable. Well, Mr Chairman, it is desirable to those in the industry to know what the rules are that they're going to be operating under. That we're introducing a new test here, and I think that um, businesses and industry players deserve to know exactly what those rules are. To sim simply um, say that it's too prescriptive to talk about waiting doesn't cut it, Mr Chair, and I'd like the Minister to take a further call and give some clarity to the House and indeed to impacted industries about what that may be. Because, Mr. Mr Chairman, these are the criterion that will be applied when the Minister makes a choice about whether or not um, the countervailing duty will be applied. That this, the government has decided it wants to go down this route, that it wants to go down of having um, um, a change of legislation where we have a regime and tests Will people need to know what that means? And I look here forward to hearing from the Minister and hearing um, what each of those factors that the Chief Executive will, will um, investigate when applying the public investigate means and what the relative weightings will be. I understand that the Minister can't be absolutely precise and say it will be the same in, in every single circumstance, but Mr Chairman, what we do need to know is what the direction of travel is. And industry are telling us they don't have that at the moment. There is confusion, there is lack of clarity, and it is not good for anybody when our manufacturers and our exporters are left wondering where it is they stand around the kind of protections that will be in place for them. Of course, um, the, um, Labor wanted to be able to support this legislation, but when it came down to the detail like this, Mr Chairman, when we went through it in detail at Select Committee, we couldn't be satisfied. We couldn't be satisfied that um, the right um, rules and there was a no robust enough regime had been put in place. So I look forward to hearing from the Minister and the Chair. Mr. Chair. Oh, the Honourable Jackie Dean. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um